Right, this week we're filming in uh, what is known as Carnoustie Country and I'm stood on what is the third fairway of Carnoustie Golf Club. Not playing here this week. I'll take a few snaps around here, a few clips, and I'm going to get off and play some golf at Pamure is where it all starts. Do you know what's strange? Is only walking up and down holes number two and number three and it's an obvious statement to make, but you can tell the quality of this place and uh, quite how difficult it is just seeing A, how many bunkers there are. That hole three behind me was littered with bunkers and then there's a burn that runs right across it that I've took, uh, tried to take a few photos of there. And then again, the runoffs into that small green just shows you why these kind of places are open championship venues. So after a brief look at Carnoustie, uh, I get too excited. We're not playing here until tomorrow, but I'm going to have a look at Pamure Golf Club, get an idea what this place looks like, and uh, we tee off three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. But like I said, I can't wait that long. I need to go and have a quick nosy. So I arrived at Pamure, it is absolutely death still in terms of the breeze and you just know it's going to be nothing like this tomorrow morning when I actually tee it up. But for now, it's got a feel about it this place, hasn't it? Inside of the clubhouse at Pamure is a real sense of history, so intense it would almost seem tangible. The full story of Pamure is for another day. Much of the current design follows suggestions by James Braid in 1922, but it was when Ben Hogan graced the fairways in 53 that a new chapter would be written. Right, we've just played the first five holes and I've got uh, David Brody, a general manager at Pamure. We're about to go on the sixth hole. You started relaying a story about Ben Ogan and the history behind this one hole, but I wondered if you could just repeat that again for us. Yeah, so it was uh, when Hogan came to prepare for playing in the Open Championship at Carnoustie in 1953. He spent two weeks at the club um, and after leaving, he he'd commented to the, the club committee his favourite hole was the sixth. And that, that two weeks, sorry, was that, that was his practice, wasn't it? Ready for, he'd never played on he'd any links hole before. He'd never played courses at all. He'd never been in the UK, from my understanding. He'd never been here before. So essentially he came, we obviously used a different size ball. So yes. he had to become accustomed with that. And obviously the way that he played with the long... Uh, divot. The long divot. He needed to obviously work away from that. So he spent two weeks just drilling him and, him and his caddy and just played the holes and um, used some of the holes as driving ranges uh, or they, they used the 17th as a as a range facility right uh, so just to, to get become accustomed um and he went on and then he went on after two weeks to win the open yeah so obviously it was all down to pam you yeah, yeah nothing yeah, to yeah. do with hogan's <laughs> yeah. amazing talent um yeah so obviously but it played it its just, part anyway yeah completely and it's it's, it's a lovely part of our history um, that essentially only ever played here, the Burnside and the Meadow course at Carnoustie. 
was the only times that he played. So essentially yeah, yeah. played here more yeah, yeah. Than, than any other course um, in the UK, which is which is lovely. Um, there's some lovely anecdotal stories about his, his time here as well. And then at, at the, the time he said, the one thing that the sixth hole is missing is a greenside bunker. Yeah. So the committee put installed the greenside bunker, still known now as Hogan's Bunker. Oh, right. And then the hole was changed, the name was changed to Hogan after his time here. So oh, fantastic, yeah. Uh, it's a little bit of a test. So well, it's going to be a test today because right into the wind on this one as well. we're today because it's, uh, it's a tough hole as yeah. it is. So if I can get anywhere near Hogan's Bunker in two, we'll, uh, we'll take that any day of the week. Um, absolutely. A par today is going to feel like a birdie. David went on to explain that a birdie on Hogan's Hole would see golfers rewarded with a special memento. And even with a two to three club headwind, the challenge was on. A reasonable drive narrowly avoiding the fairway bunker left me 176 yards directly over that infamous bunker. It would require my Sunday best, and for once, I duly obliged. It looks to me like it was. Well, that's without doubt the best shot I have hit, well, probably in a long time, but certainly uh, since I've turned up at Pan Muir today. Right, I'm actually taking my time over this one. It means a lot to, uh, if I could hold this, I, I mean that, it really does. There's a challenge going on in my head, and I desperately want to hold this. Oh! <laughs> oh! Well, I say I'm disappointed missing the putt, but I'd have took a foot all day long in what is. That's an incredible golf hole. And uh, to be named after Ben Hogan. The burning would have been nice, but like I said, great golf hole, and uh, that's a damn good par into the day's breeze. Each hole at Pam Muir is aesthetically pleasing, demands your attention and I can only describe as a joy to play. I'm actually doing all right there. That was another putt for birdie. I'm not making the putts, unfortunately, but uh, the par three that we just played, um, which was, I think we played about 170 yards down to that flag. And you'll see the mounds that are known as hillocks, which are right in between this whole lead up from tee to green. They're stunning visually to look at, and I can imagine can cause a few problems as well, playing into the par three. But seriously, one of the nicest par threes that I've played quite difficult as well uh, fortunately i landed on the right part of the green but i can imagine you can have uh, some a few nightmares on that hole and uh, a few problems getting up and down if you do miss that green right that one's away down the left hand side uh probably onto the next fairway but i just wanted to mention the tee boxes um I've got a great thing that they've done here at Pam Muir, which is there are no red tea boxes, uh, which obviously is uh, what you'd assume is associated with ladies' tea boxes, but here they've got yellow, they've got blue, they've got white. They've got some black tea boxes thrown in. I won't be going anywhere near them, um, but it's an interesting move, and uh, 
ladies, gents, effectively playing off exactly the same tee boxes, which I think is uh, a real positive move. It's the first time I've seen it, and uh, yeah, it's nice to see. Well, do you know what I've got? Uh, like I said, I pulled it pretty much onto the other fairway. It's it's sitting up quite nice, but just look at what you're looking at over the burn there. It's an absolute stunning par four. Straight back into the wind, would you believe? If this club is right, it's good. Be right. Oh, it's long. Oh, I can't believe it was long. Wow. Oh, I don't know whether that's just drifted a little bit. Is it the right club? Ah, it's made front edge, which to be honest with you, I'll take, but the thing is, it's, uh, I've always got a smile on my face around here because uh, I always say it, when you're playing a course like this, it doesn't really matter where that ball finishes up because uh, just take a look around you. Super shot, well played. There are some courses which you have an immediate connection with. I know not why or how to describe, but for me, Pam Muir is a very special golf course. Right, so another end to another episode of Scotland's Less Obvious, and this place is just, um, hopefully we've done it justice. It was incredible. Right from the arrival in the clubhouse, which has got an incredible air about it. I even said in the clip we filmed yesterday, there's something special about this course, and it does, it has an aura around it and from that clubhouse. And the relationship with Ben Hogan, playing Hogan's hole, uh, almost, almost birdie, and I'll never shut up about that. Uh, was a real highlight, but uh, hole six, nine, the par three with those hillocks, hole 12, again, fantastic golf hole. Uh, right the way through to the last, and the clubhouse uh, really is, um, I don't know, it just sits there throughout on the way back in. Fantastic. I can't say any more about this place. Enjoyed every single minute of it. So if you're in Carnoustie country, make sure you come to uh, Pam Muir. You won't be disappointed, I promise you. Oh, I, I walked after that one. I thought that's finally it, 18th hole. The birdie comes. That was a great game anyway. Uh, we can't shake hands, so we can do that. Well done, mate. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah. That birdie will have to wait till next time. Yeah.